a good ride this afternoon. What kind of a horse is Brad drawn? Well, I think he's got a pretty good horse. Horse color, early wolf linger. He usually comes right around here to the right. The horse has been bucking this year real good, so he should be in good shape on him. Can you handle the pressure this week? Oh, shoot, I hope so. It's too late if I can. Good luck, Chance. To find out what it is, we'll get right back to you. Let's go to the number one man in the leader for the year. This is Ken Cooper at Declo, Idaho. What a year he has had. Last year at the NFR, Kent placed on every horse that he rode. The disappointment in the 83 year, as we take a closer look at this guy, look at his average. You bet. 51 of 90 rodeos he placed at. That's the reason he's the leader. He bucked off too many horses here last year. In fact, he, uh, as I started to say, placed on every horse that he rode, but he bucked off of about four or five. Here he is. Okay, old Tomcat's the horse underneath him right now. This one comes from Jim Shoulders from Henrietta, Oklahoma. Notice the way he tucks his chin, dips his head, rides down in there, lifts on that rein. Here's a man that knows what he wants to do. Look at there. Go, Uncle Kent. The family's here <laughs> to cheer him on from old Declo, Idaho. That's God's country, Ray really, is it? Beautiful up there. Take a look. The man has a style that's so strong. The lift on the rein, the grip right there against the swells of the saddle. See him bow out over the front of that horse. He is stout. 75 points. He needed those 75. That'll put him up there now in a tie for the lead with Monty Henson, with him first and second. Cooper, he did need that. Cooper did need that. Well, uh, you know, Brad has been closing. 76 is still our lead now with Bud Monroe as we look to a pair of 74s and a pair of 73s. Actually, three seconds. This big boy made his move last night. He was kind of coasted along there. He wasn't showing in the prize money, but he has been in the consistency, and he's in second place in the average right now. He split the goal round last night, so he picked up a win of $3,500, and he feels a little bit better about that good lead. Look, go, go Uncle Kent. Kent. For those of you that have ever been around Declo, Idaho, between Pocatello and Twin Falls, we'll say, you know where this man lives. And he's got as many good practice horses in his pen at home as most rodeo producers have got good dogs. That was an unorthodox start for that horse. That's the old surprise package, and I'll tell you, he had a little surprise, didn't he? And when he went to back it out like that, he wasn't sure where he was. And because of that, it just started him off in the wrong direction. But boy, when he once got in line, he did go to jumping and kicking. There's the name. Where's the king? There's your cowboy walking back. You watch him in many major rodeos across the country win it all. Lead for the world for the last seven months. 72 points tonight. Cooper is not going to win anything with that after last night's first and second split. But uh, we'll just have to let it slide. He'll be back in there starting to talk to Mel Coleman. But I bet they're in there rearing them up now. Tip one for us, boys. Kent Cooper at Declo Idaho is the cowboy. Favorite sin is the horse that he's on. This is a Burris Johnson horse. Now here's the man that's led him all year long with this kind of a spurring style right here. Another good jumping, kicking, solid kind of bucket horse, but I'm not judging anymore. I found out where I know it is. Eugene Weekly sets him down along with Brad Churchill, two of the finest pickup men you could ever have anywhere. And Kent Cooper from Declo, Idaho, as of tonight, has earned $63,126. 74, they say, with an 81, a 77. We have three 74s to follow, a 76, so they're down in the fourth place money. Look at this style. I don't know where you are tonight or what you do for Bronchite, but you should enjoy this. Here's the time you've been on him. Oh, it's about the fourth time. You win every time? Yeah, I've had pretty good luck on him so far. A lot riding on this one tonight. Good luck, partner. Now, they're talking about the horse that Kent Cooper is about to get on. You're right. The last one, you know, I heard a long story about that. This old boy rode him up there and was watching these guys ride, watching this man in his practice bin, and he said, uh, I've got a horse I'm sitting on, Buck, better than ones you guys are trying to practice on. Kent says, well, let me try it. <laughs> Three weeks later and 20 rides later, he bucked everybody off and they kept him. Then he went to Mike Servi through Ned Londo in Las Vegas, Nevada. And this horse that he's getting on has been to the national finals more times than any of the Bronc riders here, including Bobby Brown. This is the horse called War Drums. He belongs to Jim Sutton. And the horse back in 79, I believe it was 79, yes, he carried uh, Bobby Berger to a world championship on the last yep. ride of the round. rodeo, the 10th go-around. He bucked Mel Coleman off and cost him a lot of money here a couple of years ago. 
And it seems like this old paint horse, every year, will have one of his best trips. Get right down in there with him. This horse here has always been a little tough to get out on. He's been laying here in the chute against the gate. Again, that spur out rule is extremely important. He's leaning against the gate. They're trying to get him standing up properly so that Kent has a good shot to get the spurs in the proper position when that gate comes open. He looks pretty good now. Look, he nodded his head one time. The gate men weren't ready. All right, here you go. Come on, Coop. It's time to come alive. Brad Gerdmanson and Clint Johnson, Monty Henson, they're all right on your tail. <laughs> up to $64,000 this year. If you wonder why Kent Cooper came here in the lead, just watch that ride and you will know. Now, again, it doesn't have to be the highest score that we watched all night, but it was a pretty ride. Let's see what they're going to mark him. 79. Tie for the lead. Oh, is that what he needed? That's just what he needed because Look. he needs to get ahead of them. And here comes one of the guys right behind him. Here's yes. the Hawkeye getting ready. We'll see how it works. In fact, looking a little further ahead as we do go to Hawkeye. The stories about a lot of cowboys. And before this week is over and our Heston telecasts are through, you're going to hear some more. But this particular man in a fancy burgundy shirt that's getting on this horse tonight, there's his name. We don't have to tell you who it is. Is one of the many Coopers that are entered here this year. Chalk has a horse that's been around for quite a while. Kent Cooper, of course, has a lot of ability, but this horse bucked Rick Smith off earlier in the week. Pretty hard horse to ride. A little tough to control his head. He's squatting in the chute. He wants to make sure that he gets a good scald at him. Horse rears out. I'll tell you, Kent can pull on one. He'll get down in that saddle. He'll get a good hold of him with his feet. The horse here does not have good timing. He throws a lot of power to ride it because he doesn't spend much time in the air. He'll kind of hop and skip along, which makes it extremely tough for the bronc rider to get in time with the animal so that he can make the ride that you might make on, uh, let's say, a horse like Crystal Springs, the horse that they're winning the go around on. As we watch Cooper in the uh, replay, you can see what Larry was talking about. The timing, it's very difficult to get that rhythm going. And this man needed a good ride. He definitely needed a good ride because he's in the lead of the championship by only $275 now as Brad Germanson has really put the heat on him this week. Right now, he's in a fourth split. Want to tell you a story about this next man up in a moment? Now, as Kent Cooper gets set to climb down in that saddle, he has moved to second place because of the big wins by Brad Germanson. He is $2,275 behind. You want to talk about the average for Kent Cooper for just a moment? He's in second place in the average. Germanson is out of it. So this guy right here, if we were to end it today, even though he's almost $2,300 behind in the race for the championship, his second place win on the average would be good for $7,300. So he is technically ahead of Brad Germanson, even though the monies posted so far don't reflect that. All right, again, we go back to the importance of the average for this man. His money is yet to be won in the average. What he needs is consistency. He'd like to have a go-around win, but Cooper doesn't have to have it. What he does have to have is a successful ride on the horse. Miss him out, buck down before the eight-second whistle. This can make all the changes in the world to the world title. So, Bob, this How is would you case. like to know that all of that laid on you? He knows that they've been yeah. figuring these stats every second since they've been here in nine days. Out here, duck and dive around that corner, kind of chopped up with it. Because of that, threw him off balance. Boy, did he make a comeback. I like his style. He coasted for a little bit there. He didn't need the go-around win, but he needed that horse, and he stayed in there. Our score for that young cowboy. 
Now watch this horse cut to the right right here. He says, I'm going to get away from these spurs. I'm going to just get him into the wall. When he hit, kind of stumbled and slid there for a minute. And you know we don't shoe bucket horses. 70 points, we come up for Kent, 7-0. Well, that is so important for him. He has to qualify on this bronc and tomorrow afternoon. He cannot make any mistakes. He's had a good year. He's consistent. He is tough to throw off. He too will tuck that chin, pull on a horse's head. He has a lot of power. He'll take a hold of one. He gets a hold of them extremely well with his feet, which is important. And basically, I'd say he's one of the toughest bronc riders going to throw off. Here he is, Kent Cooper on Johnny Ringo. I'll tell you what, it looked like he was a little weak at the gate right there, but uh, that was not my decision. They let him go. The horse made one short move and uh, then a bigger jump after that. That's another thing that he does not want to do this late in the game is miss one out. Tomorrow afternoon, the world championship can be determined on how well this man rides. Kent, what do you think of that horse? Oh, he's all right. He, I like my first one better, but From what I understand, you uh, at one time owned, excuse me. Yeah, we used to have him for a practice horse. Uh, I've seen him quite a few times over the past few years, and he is the kind that you could maybe mark an 85 on. Oh, man, I was happy to have him and then have him do that, but make the best of a bad situation, I guess. Congratulations, Brad Germanson. Congratulations, Kent Cooper. But at this point, we still don't know who the world's champion bronc rider is. At least I don't. Do you, Kent? No, I don't. I don't know what. I haven't been keeping track. I don't know. It's going to be close. Within, I don't know, probably a couple, 300, one way or the other. That was a rank bronco road. What did you, you think of her? Well, I had her once this summer, and I knew I'm glad I'd been on her because she, she dang sure is one of the best. Well, it's going to take us a few minutes before we'll know who the world